Hi there folks, Dr. Don Dumore here to introduce more hemp products. As you've seen in our past, we've got hemp protein powder, hemp milk, hemp waffles, hemp crunch, hemp tortillas, a wide array of hemp products that I know that if you have the time, you'll go out and buy because these are fully nutritious products, high in amino acids, which are the building blocks of whole proteins. Uh, all your essential amino acids can be found in these hemp products in the hemp seed. And another thing that I'd like to introduce here, another product that I'd like to introduce here is hemp oil vinaigrette. I'm the salad man, oh yeah. I'm the salad man, oh yeah. And dress up your salad, you know that I can, with this fine hemp oil vinaigrette. It's a hemp oil based vinaigrette dressing and this stuff will add flavor and nutritional benefits to any fine salad. You can even marinate your meats with it. And uh, one thing I'd like to say that the hemp oil has in it, which is make, makes it very beneficial. We've talked about the protein benefits of the hemp seed. It's got essential fatty acids, which are in perfect ratio with what the perfect ratio is to essential fatty acids, omega-3 and 6, which can be found in this. And I'd like to just introduce, explain to you, I was at home and I was figuring, well, if you can get omega-3 fatty acids from fish oil, why use hemp oil? Well, I'd like to let you know that mercury poison in the water is in uh, much of the fish oil because much of the fish oil comes from the liver and that's where toxins are stored. And I'm not saying all fish oils are loaded with this mercury, but we do have polluted waters now. So the ideal place to go for your es essential omega-3 fatty acids would be definitely hemp oil. And hemp doesn't require any pesticide to be grown, so you don't have to worry about the pesticides getting into the hemp to corrupt your hemp oil. Stop bitching, have yourself a revolution. All right, thank you, Dr. Don, that's amazing. Look at the versatility of hemp. Don't let free speech go up in smoke, man. The world's leading jailer, the United States of America. I want to be a hemp because it gets done, done. I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. Well, you know, Buzz, last week's show, we really touched on a lot. We've been covering a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? And uh, one thing we forgot to talk about that we, you know, you know mentioned. Probably the most important thing of all, too. Right. And, and that was uh, marijuana and the Bible. That's right, folks. And let me tell you, from uh, 1 Timothy 4.1.6, there's a beautiful scripture. And it says, and I, I'm proud to be able to say it, folks, let me tell you. <laughs> and if you're a man of the word or a woman of the word, check it out, all right? Every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and in good doctrine. Marijuana, cannabis, hemp, oh, where our economy's crap in the bed. Oh, and the answer's always been right there. It's just the corporations have taken it away and demonized it, and everyone's staying asleep. But we're here to stick our finger up the people's coolie and wake them right the hell up. Oh, that's right. Because marijuana is the flashpoint, folks, of this program. Stop bitching. Start a revolution. You're with the Department of Freedom here in the studio. Coming from the Institute of Higher Learning. That's right. And I'm silly way I willy with my book. The Mr. Buzzy Zipwag. You know, it's funny, dude. That's what I'm saying. You can see what Alice is doing to figure out the key. You know, and it's not really us who are doing that. When you stop and look at it, it's more so it's the other way around. Right. Who's the real proctologist here? Oh, my God. You know, what we're going to talk about today? Oh, my God. Yep. Well, we got, a, we got an alarming subject coming up, folks, but I got a few articles I want to roll by you, Buzz. Bongs over Bridgeport, if you haven't heard about this one, folks. It's old news, but... Uh, 
You know, it's been a while since we've been in the studio, so we figured we'd nail it anyway. Picture this, Bridgeport's 130th district transformed into a drug-tolerant zone, that's right. Think of it as a mini Amsterdam, that's right, in which cannabis cafes and safe injection rooms are the norm. Now, what was the character behind this? Well, you know, he wants to, uh, create basically what's a dope fiend's utopia. <laughs> well, what is this guy? What is this guy's background? Who is he, some kind of prankster like us? Well, he's just another individual who has actually come to the realization that this uh, war on drugs is not working, that the more people you arrest, the more harm you're actually doing. It's the brainchild, folks, of none other than Mr. Sylvester Salcido, and he's actually not. Just your average Joe. In fact, people, ho, ho, ho. He's a Democrat. No, yeah, he's a 51-year-old man, all right, who moved to Bridgeport in 2000 with his then wife, Sonia. And uh, she was formerly the Bridgeport School Superintendent. So this ain't no dummy, all right? And it, it was also the year he began publicly protesting the war on drugs. Praise the Lord for the man. Yeah. And get behind me, Satan. Woo! All right? And then, you wanna know what he did? He sent back his Navy and Marine Corps achievement medals to President Bill Clinton. And you know what he said? To Clinton, he said, narcotic use and abuse is our problem here at home. The solution should be applied here and not in Colombia or elsewhere. All right, to spend this additional amount of money overseas is wasteful and counterproductive. He went on to say that the drug war is senseless, wasteful, and counterproductive. Amen, praise the Lord, and someone's finally getting the truth, and I hope you're gonna understand this man's a saint trying to do something righteous. If you don't understand that, it's because you yourself have been controlled by mind control, whether you're in the churches under the you know, World Organization, or the Council of Churches, or whatever it is, or you're scripted under the NEA, or if you're in law enforcement, then it's getting militarized because of this war on drugs and you don't have a clue and that's why you won't watch us hey you know this is the same government that at one time allowed uh cannabis hemp to be used to uh pay your taxes was uh sort of legalized or heavily regulated during world war ii as part of the war effort because we needed the resources from that plant for god's sake they had hash dens at the world's fair and they encouraged you to go inside and have some hash candies and then go on the rides or whatever it was oh my lord hypocrisy is going on and this ain't no democracy and people let me tell you, you know, oh it, it's considered one of the the safe it's the safest drug in the world and that's by an fda report oh that's we, uh dr professor grinspoon from professor of harvard he's uh said it's the safest drug in pharmacopoeia Buzzy Zipwag, you know what else uh, bongs over Bridgeport? I gotta tell you, there goes Sylvester. Indeed. Magic mushrooms hit the God spot. Whoa, the active ingredient in hallucinogenic mushrooms produces spiritual experience that can have lasting positive effects. You don't have to tell me twice, amen, praise the Lord. <laughs> the trial has shown, that's right, people, at uh, Hopkins University, that's right. Uh, well, anyway, if you don't know what silly Simon is, <laughs> I'm silly whale Willie. Whoa, sister brother, whoa. All right, psilocybin increases the well-being and satisfaction with uh, life two months after being taken, according to research uh, scientists at John Hopkins Medical Institution. That's right. And uh, anyway, under very defined conditions, with careful preparation, you can safely, fairly, reliably occasion what's called the primary mystical experience, folks, that may lead to positive changes in a person. Imagine that, says Professor Roland Griffith. He says, uh, <laughs> Australian professor, at the University of Sydney said this, folks. Ian McGregor says he isn't surprised that the study confirms the ability of psilocybin to induce a spiritual state. He said psilocybin-related hallucinogens have been used since ancient times in religious rituals, and the study is really formalizing what many people already know. Okay, but what he says, the apparent long-term benefit of the drug is remarkable. Oh, don't get caught with a satchel of mushrooms, you get busted and go to prison. But to see a positive effect two months later is quite striking, he says. However, the study also reports about one-third of the volunteers experience fear and anxiety. That's right, get rid of your fear and perfect love casts out fear. Well, anyway, this is the first study of its kind in four decades, Buzzy. Well, now I have to ask the first question about the uh People who uh, experienced fear and anxiety, was it because they were afraid because they're taking an illegal drug? And that psychological impact that this is wrong has already been so embedded that they right. can't actually relax well, it's, it's and It's quite it. possible, and it's a good point. You know, wasn't it like the story about your grandfather? It's like kind of the same thing about, you know, wanting to turn him out to medicinal marijuana, but he wouldn't indulge in that because he it was, it was illegal. illegal. But yeah, when he died, they were giving him morphine and whatnot, and he was, you know, tripping out. In other words, he was seeing uh, nightmares when he was dying. Yeah, that's why I'm all for the FDA. Yeah, because they killed. Yeah. My grandfather. <laughs> but anyway, let me get on with my story here. We got a lot to cover, Buzz. All right. Uh, 
It was, uh, it was one of the first scientifically rigorous study of its kind in 40 years, as 